On May 28 this year, China's domestically produced long-haul passenger aircraft, the C-919, officially began commercial operations, marking the era where the global long-haul large aircraft market shifts from the Airbus-Boeing duopoly to a tripartite competition involving Airbus, Boeing, and China commercial aircraft, COMAC. This undoubtedly will alter the landscape of the entire commercial aviation market. However, whether the C919 can truly carve out its own space remains to be seen after it faces the competition from the industry giants, Boeing and Airbus, once it goes public. This is no easy feat, as these two industry titans have long monopolized the market for decades, erecting massive fortifications around their market shares. So, can the fledgling C919 become the wall breaker in this market? What is the significant meaning of C919 for China and the world? I've heard a somewhat absurd claim before that Chinese people are eager to prove their capabilities by replicating products available in Western countries. Is this really the case? Today, I will share my perspective with you. Let's begin. First, let's understand the basic landscape of the civil aviation market. In terms of classification, the C919 belongs to the long-haul passenger aircraft category, which undertakes major air routes, often referred to as large aircraft. In contrast, short-haul passenger aircraft primarily operate on routes with smaller passenger flows and more remote regions. In China, in this category, we mainly have the Xinzhou series and ARJ-21. However, short-haul passenger aircraft are not the mainstream in the market. The main battlefield of the civil aviation market is still in the long-haul passenger aircraft category. On average, over a thousand units of long-haul passenger aircraft are sold each year in the past decade, and the future demand is expected to further increase. According to the China Civil Aircraft Market Forecast Annual Report released by Aviation Industry Corporation of China AVIC, in 2019, the global demand for long-haul passenger aircraft from 2019 to 2038 will reach 39,300 units, with China alone exceeding 8,000 units in demand. Within the long-haul passenger aircraft category, there are two levels, the larger, twin-aisle wide-body passenger aircraft and the smaller, single-aisle narrow-body passenger aircraft. The twin-aisle wide-body passenger aircraft refers to aircraft with two passenger aisles, generally accommodating 250 or more seats, with a maximum takeoff weight of over 200 tons. On the other hand, the single-aisle narrow-body passenger aircraft has only one passenger aisle in the middle, usually with around 150 to 190 seats and a maximum takeoff weight of approximately 70 tons. This type of aircraft, like the C919, is commonly seen and falls under this category. Despite being smaller in size, it is the most economical model. Why is it the most economical? Because, although theoretically larger aircraft can accommodate more passengers, in reality, the increase in aircraft size is not directly proportional to the number of passengers it can carry. This is mainly because passengers cannot be packed into the space like cargo, so the larger the aircraft, the more wasted space there is. While passengers are more comfortable, airlines are not. The weight of a wide-body aircraft is three times that of a narrow-body aircraft, its price is more than double, but the number of passengers it can carry is only about 1.5 times more. Therefore, this level is only used for long-haul routes or routes with particularly large passenger flows. So, does that mean smaller-sized aircraft make more money? Not necessarily. While the primary function of an aircraft is to transport passengers, it also has an important side job, cargo transportation. The space beneath passenger seats is the cargo hold. Because of the existence of this side job, cargo transportation, it's ideal for the aircraft's cargo hold to accommodate standard air cargo containers. If this isn't achieved, the profitability of this side job is significantly reduced. Additionally, regardless of the aircraft size or level, it needs at least one captain and one first officer, along with basic flight attendants. These salary expenses are fixed. Moreover, regardless of the aircraft size, the takeoff and landing processes require the same amount of time on the runway 
and parking also necessitates the use of the same boarding gates. The rental costs for these spaces do not become cheaper because the aircraft is smaller. Hence, being too small can also lead to losses. In conclusion, airlines have found after years of operation that an aircraft with a seating capacity of 150 to 190 seats, a diameter of 3.7 to 3.9 meters, two engines, and a takeoff weight of around 70 tons, a single-aisle narrow-body passenger aircraft, is the optimal economic solution. Therefore, aircraft of this level dominate the civil aviation market, accounting for 80% of the global annual aircraft sales. However, this large cake has been dominated by just two products for nearly decades, the Boeing 737 from the United States and the Airbus A320 from the French company Airbus. The Boeing 737 is the world's most famous single-aisle narrow-body passenger aircraft, and by 2018, it had already accumulated a production count exceeding 10,000 units, making it the largest production long-haul aircraft in history. The Airbus A320 also exceeded 10,000 units in 2020. Facing such a classic product, are Boeing's designers proud? In fact, they were more surprised. The impressive success of the Boeing 737 was not due to its exceptionally superior design but rather because its size fell precisely within the range of the optimal economic solution. Over the decades, other Boeing aircraft like the larger 747, 757, and 767, as well as the smaller 717 and 727, all ceased production, but the Boeing 737, with its just right size, remained enduring and successful. Let's take a look again in the coming years at the previously mentioned regional aircraft. Although small turboprop aircraft are somewhat non-mainstream, they have indeed addressed practical issues in many remote areas. These aircraft have also garnered broad public support and a good reputation in these countries and regions for Chinese aircraft. These regions represent potential markets for China's future large aircraft. The market distribution of the Xinzhou series aircraft is as follows. So, China's civil aviation industry is not only well-founded but also has a broad market. By the time mainstream aircraft like the C919 come out, a pyramid system for Chinese civil aviation products has been established. For Boeing and Airbus, this is when the real wolf arrives. However, despite many advantages on paper, the C919 is still a newcomer to the market. At the outset, Comac did not have high expectations for its market performance, gradually building a good reputation is the top priority. Currently, Comac's production capacity is only over 30 aircraft per year, set to increase to 150 aircraft per year in five years. However, who knew that once the aircraft was introduced, it received a massive order of over 1,200 aircraft. More than 30 countries, including Western ones, have shown strong interest in the C919. What does this indicate? It indicates that the market has long been craving for a break from the monopolistic situation, eagerly anticipating a fresh new product. However, this is just the beginning. Although single-aisle narrow-body passenger aircraft already occupy a large portion of the civil aviation market, it does not mean that everyone is not interested in the remaining market share. Comac is currently developing the C929, a twin-aisle wide-body aircraft aimed at Boeing's 787 and Airbus's A330. Once this model is released, it will also claim a slice of the pie for intercontinental routes. Furthermore, China not only aims to conquer every corner of the traditional market but also to tap into emerging markets. Several Chinese companies are currently developing unmanned transport aircraft, which will soon revolutionize the entire civil aviation transportation industry, including cargo planes from Boeing and Airbus. Large aircraft are one of the most advanced industrial products in the human world, often referred to as the jewel in the crown of industry. Creating a narrow-body long-haul aircraft like the C919 signifies that China's path to industrial upgrading in this field has reached a peak, and the next step is to reach the summit. However, there is a fundamental question here, why do we have to expend vast resources, bear enormous risks, and face pressure from global dominators to undertake such industrial upgrades? There are many ways to make money in this world, 
we don't necessarily have to choose such a difficult path, especially when there are so many cautionary tales along the way. So, what is the real significance of developing large aircraft? Is it just to boost China's prestige? To address this question, let's take a look at some information. The research and assembly of the C919 are carried out in Shanghai, the avionics systems are manufactured in Tianjin, the nose is made in Chengdu, the fuselage and engine suspensions are made in Shenyang, the braking system is made in Changsha, the landing gear and tail are made in Harbin, the wing sections, mid fuselage, and aft fuselage are made in Jiangxi province. And the aircraft's soundproofing materials and aluminum components are managed by Chongqing. The C919 has over 4 million components, benefiting more than 20 provinces and municipalities in China from the C919's industrial chain. According to estimates from relevant enterprises, the output value generated by the C919 is expected to exceed 2.5 trillion Chinese yuan, creating direct employment for 2 million individuals. As the domestic production rate of the C919 continues to increase over the years, the scale of China's aircraft industry chain will continue to expand like a snowball. This is the magic of cutting-edge industrial products. Standing before the industrial chain of the C919, you will truly understand why China is known as the world's factory. On the other hand, no matter how advanced the technology is, it must ultimately benefit the general public to be meaningful. While being the jewel in the crown of industry is indeed dazzling, if long-term monopolization leads to unaffordable prices, it will eventually become a tool for exploitation. The best way to break a monopoly is through fair competition, which is also the significance of China's rise to the world. With China's efforts, many jewels in the crown of industry have transformed into more accessible glass beads, for example, the once multi-billion dollar tunnel boring machines are now manufactured in China at a few million dollars level. More and more people in the world will gradually realize a fact, as long as countries like China continue to innovate and progress, the dignity of the global free market should not be violated, and everyone will have the confidence to make free choices. This concludes today's sharing, and we'll meet again next time.